Hi, my name is Daniel Casey, and today we're going to be talking about river hydraulics, or also what is commonly called as open channel hydraulics. So in terms of an introduction, these are the points that we'll be covering in this presentation. We'll look at some of the basic concept in open channel hydraulics. We'll look at the difference between hydrology and hydraulics. We'll look at some of the basic equations involved. We'll look at the different types of flow, the flow regime, and we'll also look at some equation based on uniform flow. So basic concepts. One thing which is important to differentiate here is the difference between hydrolo hydrology and river hydraulics. Hydrology is all about the hydrological cycle. So we're interested in the movement of water from the atmosphere uh, to the ground. For instance, it would start with precipitation. We would have some water loss through evapotranspiration, river discharge, which is which we could also call runoff, ground groundwater flow, etc., which are all sort of uh, outlined in this figure here. Hydraulics is more about the study of moving water or fluids in a pipe flow system or in channels like rivers. So there are two types of flows. Pipe flows, which you would have in a municipality, for instance, either for drinking water or for sewage water, and also in open channel flows that you would have in the case of rivers. So here's the difference between the two. Pipe flow, such as a water distribution system, and open channel flow. But pipe flow can also be considered as an op open channel flow, especially if there's air into the pipe. So in terms of calculation, when you have a pressurized system, there's two things that gets into play here, which first is the gravity, and the second one is the pressure. But in open channel flows, even if it would be in a pipe, for instance, in a water wa wastewater uh, distribution system, only gravity gets involved in the equations. Now, some of the basic equations in, in hydraulics are the continuity equation, which basically states that the discharge, the sum of discharge from two different rivers, for instance, when it moves into a single river system, the, uh, the summation of the two is equal to the, to, to the main river. We also have the energy equation that we can set for two different locations, the energy at location one, will be equal to the energy at location two, which is the conservation of energy. Or also, we can also use the momentum equation, which, uh, which means the force A equals the mass multiplied by the acceleration. The momentum equation is generally used in hydraulic jump calculation, for instance, which we will not discuss in this presentation. Now, the different types of flow. Here, we will be talking mainly about, on, about steady flow which is basically means that the flow, the discharge, does not change over time. We know that this is not always the case, but to simplify, let's just talk about steady flow. Under steady flow, we can have uniform flow, where the depth along the channel, or the depth along the pipe, for instance, is the same. It does not change, so Y1 equals Y2 equals Y3. Non-uniform flow, then you have a change in depth spatially or downstream as you move downstream into a channel. So this is the difference between uniform and non-uniform flow. There are also two types of flow which we can describe in fluid mechanics. One is called laminar flow and the other one is called turbulent flow. Think about laminar flow as if you were on a highway where you have all kinds of vehicle going into one direction. And in this particular type of flow, the cars would not be moving from one lane to the other. They would be staying all the time in their own lane. In contrast, turbulent flow, you would have cars moving randomly from one lane to another. In rivers, you're almost always the case be that you're in a conditions of turbulent flow. You're not in the case of laminar flow because the water, because of the viscosity of the water. Now we can talk also about flow regime. The flow regime is described by the Froude number, which is given by this equation, which is the velocity over the square root of the gravity multiplied by the depth of the flow, which basically 
calculates the ratio of the initial initial force over the gravity forces. And the and as you'll see in this presentation, the Froude number is extremely important in some of the hydraulics calculation. In terms of the Froude number, if it's less than one, we will label this flow as subcritical flow or tranquil flow. If it is equal to one, we will label that or we'll call that critical flow. Obviously, if it's if it's greater than one, the Froude number being greater than one, we'll call that supercritical flow or rapid flow. Now, in order to, to analyze some of these uh, calculations, we need to describe some parameters which are related to the cross-sectional area of either a channel, a man-made channel, or a natural channel. The first one we need to, 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 to define is the hydraulic radius. The hydraulic radius denoted by R is equal to the surface area, which is in blue here, divided by the wetted perimeter, which is this, this, this distance here, along the, the, the wetted area of the stream. Similarly, hydraulic depth is defined as D being the area again over the top width. Here, the top width is either defined in the literature sometimes by W or T. Now, in order to talk about uniform flow, we need to introduce Antoine Chazy. Antoine Chazy knew about some of the experiment by Newton, which were showing that a free-falling object, the velocity of this object, was ever increasing with time. But as he was observing some of the conditions in river, he was asking himself, well, is the velocity of the river uh, due to gravity, and is, is that increasing indefinitely over time? And he soon found out using balls of wax in rivers and calculating distance that it was not increasing with time as it moved downstream. It was actually reaching a constant velocity. And he basically found out that this is basically due to the friction force on the stream bottom or on the channel bottom, which is basically equal to the, to the gravity force. And he developed this equation, basically, which is saying that the velocity in an open channel equals a roughness Chazy coefficient multiplied by the square root of the hydraulic radius multiplied by the, by the slope. If we reverse this equation, we can basically say that the product of the hydraulic radius multiplied by the slope is actually proportional to the square of the velocity. Now let's define river discharge. River discharge is basically the velocity of the fluid multiplied by the sectional area by definition. Now if we introduce the Chazy equation, into this with the velocity component, which is equal to C multiplied the square root of R multiplied by S, then we can express the discharge in an open channel being the roughness coefficient multiplied by, by the sectional area and multiplied by the square root of R multiplied by S. And this is known as the Chazy equation for discharge. The one that we had before was for velocity, for instance. Now, there's another person that came along and basically refined the Chazy coefficient. And he basically said, well, the Chazy coefficient is also a function of the hydraulic radius, as we can see in this particular equation. And this particular person named Robert Manning showed that there's another way of expressing the roughness coefficient uh, using this value of n. Now, if we replace this C value in the Chazy equation, this is the equation that we obtain for discharge, which is basically the sort of common uh, Manning's equation that we would be using in all open channel hydraulic calculation, which is basically saying that the discharge is expressed by a roughness coefficient, one over N, multiplied by the area, the hydraulic radius to the two third, multiplied by the square root of the slope. And this is the sort of famous Manning's equation. Now, related to the Manning's equation is what we will define as the normal depth. This is uniform flow, and we'll define that as y of n. We've also talked about the Froude number. When the Froude number is going to be equal to 1, 
we're going to define that as that as a critical depth. So the normal depth is the depth calculated with the Manning's equation. The critical depth is the depth when the Froude number is equal to one. So now let's look let's look at an example of applying the Manning's equation. So this is a pretty simple. Let's assume that it's a concrete open channel. It could be a box covered and it's rectangular. The bottom of the uh, channel is 1.2 meters and there's the depth of water into this particular channel of 0.5 meters. Now the slope is uh, 0 0.001 meters per meter and it's concrete so the Manning's N would be equal to 0 0.1. 0.15. Now, if we calculate the hydraulic radius, the hydraulic radius being the area over the width perimeter, the area is the y multiplied by b, where the width perimeter is this distance here, which is 2 times y plus b, and then the hydraulic radius would be calculated at 0.27. If we plug in the numbers of the roughness coefficient, the area, the hydraulic radius, and the slope, we get to calculate that the discharge, which would satisfy this particular depth of flow, would be 0 .5, uh, uh, 0 0.53 cubic meters per second. Often what happens is that we're not necessarily having a depth and looking for a discharge. Often what happens is we have a discharge and we're looking at what, what is the depth that corresponds to this. And in terms of applying the Manning's equation, sometimes you have to suppose certain depth and then calculate the, the discharge and do this in, it, uh, in using iterations and, and, and get the proper depth. And that's what we're gonna do in this particular example. So here, we have a specific discharge, same as the previous example, same concrete uh, rectangular channel with a discharge of 0.53 and the roughness coefficient of 0 0.015. Now what we want to do is we want to vary the slope of our channel. We want to have different slopes and see what would be the depth, the, the, the y of n that would correspond to this particular channel of slope. And here the data point at y of n equals 0.5 with a slope of 0 0.001 is the data point that we just calculated before. Now, if we increase the slope, we can see that the depth overall will decrease, as we can see in this particular graph. And if we decrease the slope, the depth of water will increase to over 1.2 meters. Now, there is a point to this, because now with different slopes of channel and a, and a specific discharge, we know that there's a different, there's a uniform flow depth that will correspond to this, which we'll call normal depth. So for the same discharge, same example, we can also calculate, given the depth, we can also calculate the velocity, the flow velocity, which is given here by Q over A. But we can also calculate the Froude number, which is important here. So the Froude number calculation is the equation that we, we provided before. So what do we need to do with this? Well, first of all, we can identify the first point that we had in our example, which was the depth of 0.5, and this would correspond to a Froude number of 0.4, the one that we have here. But if we calculate the Froude number for all of the other situation, we get to see that there's a point where the Froude number is equal to one. Also, at this point equal to one, we would have what we would call a channel with a critical slope, uh, S of C. And any slope below this particular slope would be in the condition of subcritical uh, sub flow, and any slope greater in a channel than this would be supercritical flow. And this is very important in calculating what we call water surface profile, as you will see in a few slides. So at a Froude number of one, you have a critical depth, you have a critical slope, and you obviously you have a critical velocity. 
Now, when we go from subcritical to supercritical flow, from tranquil to fast, nothing much happens. You will just pass through your critical depth. However, if you go from supercritical flow to subcritical flow, from fast to tranquil, then there's something very important in hydraulics that we need to understand is that you will pass through what we call the critical flow, and this is done abruptly through what we call a hydraulic jump. And a hydraulic jump can easily be seen in any kitchen for anybody if you just let the water flow through. And in this particular instance, you see out of this figure that you have a Froude number which is supercritical here, and it goes from supercritical to subcritical, and it passes through one, and this would be denilating your, your hydraulic jump in your kitchen, for instance. But this is very important for hydraulic structures, uh, when these hydraulic jump occurs in different locations, we definitely want to make sure that they that we control where they, the location of these jumps. Now, what did we do all of this for? Well, we want to understand based on the slope of our channel and based on what is the hydraulic structure which is within our channel, uh, what would be the surface profile. And in this particular case, we have initially we have a mild slope and then we have a steep slope and we want to be able to draw what would be the type of profile that we have within these types of situations. So the first thing you do is you calculate your critical depth, which is here. The critical depth does not change. This is the same channel that we had before, the rectangular, the rectangular channel that we had before. However, the, the normal depth in the mild will be higher than your critical depth, and in the and in the steep slope, it will be lower. So your your normal depth will be higher here, and it will be lower there. So in the same cases that we had before for the same discharge and conditions, then we can see that what will happen is you would start with a normal depth in your channel. Then you need to increase this normal depth to go over your this your 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 dam in this particular situation. And then the flow will get supercritical underneath here, and it will come below the dam in a supercritical way. But thereafter, you will need a hydraulic jump to bring back this depth to the depth of the normal depth, which is here. Then for a while, you'll still have that normal depth again. But going through your critical flow here, you will need to change that depth going through the critical flow. Similarly here, the depth will change and then you'll reach again equilibrium at the end where you will have also a normal depth in the steep channel. So all of these water surface profile are important in any hydraulic structure that we have. In this case, it was a dam. It could be a culvert, it could be underneath a bridge, or it could be different types. It could be an open channel, for instance. And when you're in the mild, we basically will call these mild like in this case, it will be M1, this will be an M3, and this will be an M2. But on, in the steep channel, all of your type of profile that you have in the steep channel will be labeled as S. So thanks for watching, and hopefully this will be useful in the analysis of your hydraulic uh, structures.